Hello students, I am Barsha, your teacher for today. I welcome you all. Today we are going to read a new chapter from Moments. The name of the chapter is In the Kingdom of Fools. This is a very interesting as well as a humorous story students. And I do believe that you will enjoy the whole story and maybe you can't stop laughing too. Because the way the story has been conveyed, it has a message inside it as well as it has some fun element along with it to enjoy. Students, basically this is a folk tale which is written originally in Kannada language. You know, we have 22 scheduled languages as per the constitution of our country. So, this is one of the language Kannada, this is the ancient language and this was written by A.K. Ramanujam in his book Folk Tales of India. So, the original story is written in Kannada and here we have the story in English. This is a folk tale. Folk tale uh, is basically passed from one generation to another and it tells us the story of the customs, the traditions of a particular region and it is very interesting to hear these stories. Sometimes our grandmas uh, narrate these stories to us, sometimes our fathers, mothers, our parents, they share these stories with us and there is a lot to learn from these stories. These are the folk tales. So, let us start this interesting story and I do hope that you all will enjoy a lot all throughout this story. Students, this is a story about a kingdom where everyone was a foolish. So, the writer here basically wants to convey that if a place is full of unintelligent people, who do not even have normal presence of mind or common sense to tackle the problems in their life, then it becomes really very, very critical for others to survive. This is what is the message in the story. And we all know that where fools rush in, angels fear to tread. So if the place is full of these unintelligent people who are unable to understand what is the reason why it should be done, then it really becomes very tough to deal with these people. So that's the storyline of this particular story. So there was a kingdom which was all filled up of this foolish people who didn't know what to do, how. And fortunately or unfortunately, the king and the ministers were the biggest fools of the kingdom and how they handled the kingdom that is the story. Okay, so let us start the story. In the kingdom of fools, both the king and the minister were idiots. You know, idiots means were very, very foolish, unwise people, those who didn't have any common sense to use. They didn't want to run things like other kings. So, they decided to change night into day and day into night. They ordered that everyone should be awake at night till their fields and run their businesses only after dark and go to bed as soon as the sun came up. Can you imagine what happened? So, there was this kingdom, the kingdom of fools where the king himself and the minister were all foolish people. And because they were foolish, they felt themselves smarter than other kings. So they decided that their kingdom will be different from others. And what did they decide, you know? That the day will be changed to night and the night will be changed to day. They wanted to do this experiment with the nature. Nature has its own rule. You know, when the sun shines, it's a day. And when the moon comes, the stars are there, that is a night. But these foolish people tried to change the law of nature. They did just the opposite. 
and the same was instructed to the people in the kingdom. They were instructed that everyone should be awake. They cannot sleep at night because that would be considered as the daytime. Okay. And in the night, which is night for us, would be day for them. Okay. So, in the night time, they had to do all the activities, whatever they used to do in the daytime. So, they had to till their fields. They had to go on through their businesses. And only after dark, it would be the daytime for them. And they would go to bed in the daytime. So, it was just vice versa. The people did as they were told for fear of death. The king and the minister were delighted at the success of their project. So, all the people in the kingdom, they were bound to follow the orders of the king. You know, that was because of the fear of death. Who is not scared to go dead? If they will not follow the orders, then they would be punished by the king. So, the poor kingdom people all were scared. And they were all following the orders of the king blindly without thinking about anything. And the king and the ministers, those who were foolish people, they were very happy at the success of their project. They felt, wow, what a remarkable achievement we have made. Our things are working perfectly. So they were happy at the success of their project. Let us know what happened next. One day, a guru and his disciple arrived in the city. It was a beautiful city. It was broad daylight, but there was no one about. Everyone was asleep, not a mouse stirring. Even the cattle had been taught to sleep by day. The two strangers were amazed by what they saw around them and wandered around town till evening when suddenly the whole town woke up and went about its nightly business. Now what happened one day? There were some visitors in the kingdom. A guru, there was a guru who had come to this city with his disciple. Disciple is the follower who follows the instructions of the guru. So they came to the city and it was a beautiful city indeed. So they were very happy to come to this city and it was broad daylight. Why? Because the sun was shining. But they were very much scared to see that no person was there in the city. Nobody was there moving around. It was such a broad daylight. But still then, no people were there around. So everybody was asleep. We know that, but not the guru and the disciple. And not a mouse stirring. Stirring means moving here and there. You know, students, because the people had instructed their animals in such a way that not even a single mouse, not even a creature, let it be the cattle, let it be the dog, let it be the mouse, not a single creature was moving around. Even the cattle, the cows and the buffaloes had been taught to sleep during the daytime. It was very strange for the guru and the disciple. They were very much surprised by whatever they saw. And wandered around town till evening. They were moving around till evening. And in the evening they saw the whole town woke up and went about its nightly business. So they woke up in the night and started their work in the night time. Okay. Now the two men were hungry. Now that the shops were open, they went to buy some groceries. To their astonishment, they found that everything cost the same, a single do-do. Whether they bought a measure of rice or a bunch of bananas, it cost a do-do. The guru and his disciple were delighted. They had never heard of anything like this. They could buy all the food they wanted for a rupee. Now these two people, the strangers, the guru and the disciple were very very hungry. So now the shops were open and they got everything, whatever they wanted. And the most amazing fact about the shops was that, that whatever they wanted to buy, it all cost the same. Can you imagine whether it's rice or it's bananas? So the cost of all the articles were the same. Wasn't it surprising? Yes, definitely it was. 
Why? Because it was a land of foolish people. These people did not know the real value of anything. So, the cost of everything was same. So, the value of all the articles in this kingdom was all the same. It was very surprising. But the guru and the disciple were very very happy because they had never experienced such a situation before where the price of all the articles will be the same. It's very strange actually because every article has its own value. The price is decided by the quality of the article. But here the people especially the king and the ministers were not that intelligent to decide this. And Dudu is the currency of that particular place where uh, the guru and the disciple were staying. So as we have rupee in our country, if you go to other countries, they have taka. Bangladesh has taka as their currency. Uh, like Iran you go, they have dinar as their currency. So different places have different currencies in the country. So here the currency which was in use uh, that was dudu. So it was all the same. It cost all the same. It was one dudu. Now let us see what happened next. When they had cooked and eaten, the guru realized that this was a kingdom of fools and it would not be a good idea for them to stay there. This is no place for us. Let's go, he said to his disciples. But the disciple didn't want to leave the place. Everything was cheap here. All he wanted was good cheap food. So finally when the guru and the disciple they reached home, the guru was a very much intelligent person. He was a far-sighted visionary. He could feel that there was something wrong in this kingdom. It is definitely a kingdom of foolish people, those who do not know what's the value of which article. That's why it's all the same. So he understood this fact and realized that it would not be a good idea for both of them to stay at that place for a longer time. So he suggested his disciple that this is not the right place for us. So let us move out from this place and let us go. But the disciple didn't want to leave the place. Why you know? Because he was very much impressed from the place there. Because everything was so cheap. Whether it is food, whether it was anything else, everything was the same. And the disciple actually was a foodie. He was very much interested in eating and eating. So he wanted to stay there. The guru said, they are all fools. This won't last very long and you can't tell what they will do to you next. Guru was very intelligent. He could understand that the place where all the foolish people stay is not a safe place for them at all. So he advised to his disciple that what you are thinking is not going to continue forever. It may change any time. And then you may suffer. You never know what they are going to do when because this is a land of all foolish people. But the disciple wouldn't listen to the Guru's wisdom. He wanted to stay. The Guru finally gave up and said, Do what you want. I am going and left. The disciple stayed on, ate his fill every day bananas and ghee and rice and wheat and grew fat like a street side sacred bull. Now the disciple was not convinced with the words of Guru. He didn't want to listen to anything said by the Guru. He decided that whatever is the matter, I am happy here. I am getting whatever I want. I am happy with the food here and I am not going to get these kind of treatment anywhere else. I am not going to get this cheap food anywhere. So let me enjoy my life here. Guru finally understood that this disciple is not going to listen to him. So he gave up. He quit it there 
and then he said okay fine it's your choice it's your decision do whatever you want but i am not going to stay with you here and the guru left the place the disciple continued staying there and he enjoyed a lot because every day he would get a lot of food around him he was enjoying the food like anything he had ample of food everywhere around him starting from bananas to ghee rice wheat everything and slowly because of the food he grew fat like a street side sacred bull sacred means pious holy so when you see this bulls those who are lying by the side of the streets by the roads they are very much healthy and strong isn't it so the disciple also grew fat like the street side bulls let us see what happened next one bright day a thief broke into a rich merchant's house he had made a hole in the wall and sneaked in and as he was carrying out his loot the wall of the old house collapsed on his head and killed him on the spot his brother ran to the king and complained your highness when my brother was pursuing his ancient trade a wall fell on him and killed him this merchant is to blame he should have built a good strong wall you must punish the wrong doer and compensate the family for the injustice now see what happened one bright day for us but night for them so they were all sleeping a thief broke into a rich merchant's house so this was the perfect time for the robbers thieves to carry on their job so a thief broke into a rich merchant's house he wanted to steal and he went into the house of a rich merchant so he had made a hole in the wall and sneaked in and went inside and just when he was entering inside to carry out his work at the same time the wall of the house which was very very old it collapsed it fell down okay and that too on his head and there itself the thief was dead he died there because of the falling of the wall and his brother when he got this news that his brother died because of the collapsing of the wall he ran to the king for complaining and what did he say to the king that your highness my brother was pursuing his ancient trade imagine stealing was considered as an ancient trade ancient means very very old trade means business so he wanted to say stealing is our family business which is very very ancient which is very very old and so we were continuing it my brother was continuing it and suddenly the wall fell on him and he is no more so now the brother of the thief wanted some compensation from the king so he blamed the merchant now he blamed the merchant of whose the house was and he blamed that the merchant had not built a proper strong wall for which his brother while stealing has died so it was very very unfortunate and all blame goes to the merchant it was just because of the merchant who was not sincere and responsible enough to build the strong wall for which his brother had to lose his life so he wanted the compensation now and he requested the king that please you should punish the wrong doer wrong doer who has done the mistake who is to be blamed who was to be blamed the merchant now imagine the students the thief who was stealing he was portrayed as an innocent person who has not done anything and who lost his life because of the mistake of the merchant and the merchant was to be blamed isn't it so funny the king said justice will be done don't worry and at once summoned the owner of the house so the king also agreed to this and the king said very bluntly that yes you do not worry the justice will be done there is no place where justice will be denied so you don't worry about anything and i will give you the proper justice so he at once summoned summoned means officially the owner of the house was called to the court of the king 
When the merchant arrived, the king questioned him, What's your name? Such and such, your highness. Were you at home when the dead man burgled your house? Yes, my lord. He broke in and the wall was weak. It fell on him. The accused pleads guilty. Your wall killed this man's brother. You have murdered a man. We have to punish you. Now look at this. The moment the merchant arrived, the king started his inquiry. The king asked his name. The merchant said his name. And he asked him whether he was at home when the man who has been dead, the thief, uh, when he was stealing, he was trying to steal. Were you there in your home? And the merchant said, yes, I was there. He came inside and the wall was weak. Look at the merchant. He also said the truth that the wall was weak and that's why it fell on him. Now, uh, the king said, the accused pleads guilty. So, you yourself are telling that you are guilty because of your wall. The wall which was very weak. Because of that only, this man's brother who was the thief, he has been killed now. So, basically you have murdered a man. You have killed a person. And for that you have to be punished. We have to punish you. Lord, said the helpless merchant, I didn't put up the wall. It's really the fault of the man who built the wall. He didn't build it right. You should punish him. Now look at the merchant. He immediately shifted his blame to another person. He said, my goodness, please don't punish me. I am not at fault. I didn't build the wall. I have not built it. So it was the person who built the wall. He didn't build it properly. Now he has blamed the other person who has built the wall. And he says he has done the mistake. So he should be punished. Now the king asked, who is that? My lord, this wall was built in my father's time. I know the man. He is an old man now. He lives nearby. Now he said this was the wall which was built during his father's time. It was a very old wall. So now the man would have turned old. And he knows where the person stays. So he said, okay, I will inform him and let him get the punishment. Now the king sent out messengers to bring in the bricklayer who had built the wall. They brought him, tied hand and foot. Now, whatever uh, instructions were given by the king, those were all followed. So, the king sent out the messengers to bring in the bricklayer, the mason who built the wall, who had built this wall. So, now he had to be interrogated. He had to be questioned about this problem. So, they brought him, the messengers brought him, his hand and feet were tied. You there, did you build this man's wall in his father's time? Yes, my lord, I did. What kind of a wall is this that you built? It has fallen on a poor man and killed him. You have murdered him. We have to punish you by death. Now imagine the king said that the wall you built was very, very weak. What kind of a wall have you built? And it has fallen on a poor man. Imagine the thief was considered as a poor man and he was holding this bricklayer, the poor bricklayer, the mason who had only built the wall, he was being held responsible for the thief's death. So the king said we have to punish, punish you by death. Imagine this will be the situation if the king is a foolish. So the foolish king could not understand that the job of the thief was not right. And he should have been punished. He got his punishment actually. But apart from that, he is interrogating all these innocent people and he is trying to punish them. Now the bricklayer was in such a great trouble. Before the king could order the execution, the poor bricklayer pleaded, Please listen to me before you give your orders. It's true I built this wall and it was no good. But that was because my mind was not on it. I remember very well a dancing girl who was going up and down that street all day with her anklets jingling. And I could not keep my eyes or my mind on the wall I was building. You must get the dancing girl. I know where she lives. Now look at the story of the big layer. He had another interesting story with him because according to him, 
he was not at fault he was not guilty somebody else was guilty for which the wall could not be built properly and who was it it was a girl he blamed that i could not concentrate on my work that day i could not focus properly and for that reason the wall could not be built properly what was the reason because in front of me there was a woman there was a girl a dancing girl who had worn anklets anklets you know that's a kind of jewelry which is worn on your feet uh, on your ankles it is worn so that's the anklet and the sound of the anklets chum 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 that's the sound jingling sound you can say which is made by the anklets so he blamed this girl that she was wearing the anklets and the whole day she was moving up and down the street and which distracted this bricklayer the mason and he could not concentrate on his work properly that was the reason for which he could not build the wall properly can you imagine how funny the situation was so everybody was building up their own story and was passing on the blame to each other now the blame was on the dancing girl and the bricklayer said i know the address of this dancing girl you could call her you could ask her the reason why she did that and she is at fault you are right the case deepens so according to the king also the bricklayer was correct and he said okay fine you are correct and the case is going to be more deep and deep and we have to look into it we must look into it it's not easy to judge such complicated cases let's get the dancer wherever she is now the king also said my goodness this is not a simple case it's a very complicated case it's a difficult case and to judge the cases like this is not an easy task so we have to be very very careful and let us get that dancer now the dancing girl now an old woman came trembling to the court so now it has been a long time student so the girl who was very young then had turned to an old woman now and she came trembling she was very very old she could not walk properly so she was shivering her body was shivering was trembling and she came trembling to the court did you walk up and down that street many years ago while this poor man was building a wall did you see him so the king again questioned the girl who was a girl that time now she was an old woman that were you the girl who was walking up and down the whole day during this person was building a wall did you see him yes my lord i remember it very well so you did walk up and down with your anklets jingling you were young and you distracted him so he built a bad wall so the version of the king was that you were responsible the woman said yes she remembered it that the person was building a wall and she was walking up and down the street and the king immediately said that means you are responsible because you were young that time you were wearing anklets which were jingling and that disturbed and distracted this poor bricklayer who could not focus on his work and that's why the wall was weak and that's why a person is dead now it has fallen on a poor burglar and killed him imagine till now the burglar is a poor burglar only because he is dead because of the wall you have killed an innocent man you will have to be punished so the king said directly to the dancing girl that it's all because of you for what we are facing it now the burglar is dead because of you you distracted the person and so you have to get the punishment she thought for a minute and said my lord wait i know now why i was walking up and down the street i had given some gold to the goldsmith to make some jewelry for me he was a lazy scoundrel he made so many excuses said he would give it now and he would give it then and so on all day he made me walk up and down to his house a dozen times that was when this bricklayer saw me it's not my fault my lord it's the damn goldsmith's fault now such an interesting story again so the dancing girl had another story this time she said it was not 
her fault at all. Yes, it is true that she was walking up and down that street. The whole day she was walking up and down. Why? There was a reason. Because she had given some gold to the goldsmith for making some jewelry. And this goldsmith was such a lazy goldsmith that he didn't make her jewelry on time. And again and again he was asking this girl to come and then the jewelry was not done. And again he asked her to come. Again, the jewelry was not done. So that was the reason why she was walking up and down the street all during the daytime. And that's why the bricklayer could not concentrate on his work. So it was not the dancing girl. It was because of the goldsmith for which all this trouble has been created. It was the fault of the goldsmith now. Okay. So the blame is passing slowly and gradually from the merchant to the bricklayer, from the bricklayer to the dancing girl and from the dancing girl now to the goldsmith. It has passed. The blame is passing on and on. So next is the turn of testing what you have understood. So let us now discuss the question answers which are given in the book. Okay. So here are the questions. Let us discuss in detail. Here is the question for you. What are the two strange things the Guru and his disciple find in the kingdom of fools? I repeat the question. What are the two strange things the Guru and his disciple find in the kingdom of fools? Absolutely correct students. You are right. The answer is the Guru and the disciple found that in the kingdom of fools, people used to work during nights and sleep during days. This is the first strange thing. And the next strange thing was that everything was cheap and cost the same. The price of everything was the same. Okay. Now let us move to the next question. Why does the disciple decide to stay in the kingdom of fools? Is it a good idea? I repeat the question. Why does the disciple decide to stay in the kingdom of fools? Is it a good idea? Yes, I know you got the answer. Absolutely correct students. Everything was cheap in the kingdom of fools. The disciple had peculiarity of diet. He was tempted by the cheap food. So he decided to stay in that kingdom. It was not a good idea to stay there for a long time as one could be in danger any time because of the unpredictable behavior of fools. So it was not a good idea. So students, I do hope that you are enjoying this lesson a lot, isn't it? And the story is getting more interesting slowly and gradually. There are more interesting twists and turns to come next. That will be covered in the next session. So till then, stay safe, keep smiling and continue studying also. Thank you.